In this teaching, I want to look at rhythm and the importance of balancing rest and work. It's good to look at the mechanics of a pendulum when we're talking about rest and work because it swings from one to the other. On the left, we have rest, and on the right, we have work, and we swing back and forth between the two. And as we do that, there's two processes that happen. One is pruning and the other is growing. And so we're going to look at how rest and work and pruning and growing all fit together. So let's look at God for an example and what he says in Genesis 1, 1 through 8. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, one day. Then God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. God made the expanse and separated the waters which were below the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse, and it was so. God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening and there was morning, a second day. What's striking to me in these, this passage is there was evening and there was morning one day, and I typically go about my day as there was morning and then there was evening and that was one day. So I wake up and I work, 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 and then I rest. And this is the opposite of that. First there was rest, which was the evening, and then there was morning, which was the work. So if we flip it back around, we don't rest from the work, we work from the rest. Let's move on, Genesis 1, 31 through 2, 3. God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their hosts. By the seventh day God completed his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. So again we see on the sixth day, rest and then work, but on the seventh day, he was resting from his work. So it's important for us to do both, to have that rhythm where we work from a place of rest, but then also where we allow ourselves that full Sabbath day, a full day of resting. And hello, it was one of the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So again, it's encouraging us to take care of ourselves and to have that healthy rhythm of taking a whole day every week where we rest. So how do you rest and how do you feel when you rest? Why is sometimes resting hard to do? Some people really struggle with resting and I think that part of it is our culture. There's pressure to produce to work, to work, to work, to be busy. To be busy is kind of like a badge that we can wear with pride. Oh, I'm so busy, I have so much to do. I'm always producing stuff. And we can have our identity fed by what we produce. And so then there's a lot of motivation to always be producing. Some people feel anxious and uncomfortable being still. It's that quiet time. I, I've seen some people in the quiet time get uncomfortable because that's when they face themselves. And so it's easier to distract themselves from looking at that by being busy and occupying their time. Part of it may be a work culture, an expectation of how many hours you put in, how available you are. Are you answering work emails at midnight on a Sunday or a Saturday night? and those expectations can bleed over and take away our period of rest. I've seen people feel guilty about resting, that they feel like they have to be producing to be worthy, or that that's 
what's expected of them and so then they feel like they've disappointed other people or let other people down. I've heard people call it a waste of time because they're not doing anything. So these are all barriers to resting. If any of these ring true for you, I encourage you to dig a little bit deeper into those so that you can see what is the cause, what's the core lie that you're holding on to that's making you feel this way and think this way about resting. So this is what rest can look like. It can be dwelling with God, just having some quiet time or quality time with the Lord, listening for his voice because we can't hear him as well when we're busy. I'm not saying he doesn't speak to us when we're busy because he can break through, but when I can sit and rest and be still and abide with him and in him, it just makes it easier for me to hear what he's trying to say to me. Sleeping is part of rest. It's important to get a good night's sleep, right? How many times have we heard that? Playing is rest. So while you're active, you can be resting because you're not working. Having fun, doing fun things, whatever that looks like for you. Visiting with people that you love. Doing your hobbies. Those are all forms of rest. So rest isn't always, I was just a slug on the couch. Rest can be doing things, but it has to be doing things with the purpose of just enjoying them. I visit someone just to visit them because I enjoy their company. I do my hobby just because I enjoy doing it. And I may not even be good when I'm finished with it and I'm not going to try to sell it. It's just doing it for the sake of doing it. That's rest. So let's look at what happens when we rest, which is another way to say that is to abide. And when we abide in the Lord, we are definitely resting. So John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So abiding in him and resting in him bears fruit. So let's look at the context that this comes from. So I'm going to read John 15, 1 through 11. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. So here we see this analogy of a plant growing and it needs to be connected to the vine, which is connected to the roots, which is in the soil where it gets its nutrients and the, and the water to be able to grow. And that's how it produces good fruit. And this, the, the beauty of this is it glorifies the Father as it bears fruit. It's connected to how the Father loves me. It's connected to joy. Beautiful things come from abiding. So if we look at just John 15, 2, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. So we have this process between rest and work where pruning takes place. And it makes sense that if a branch is dead, and so obviously it's not producing fruit, that I'm gonna cut it away. That part is easier for me to understand. But the pruning is, even while it's bearing fruit, it's cut back. 
So let's look at that a little bit closer to understand. So here's some examples of pruning versus not pruning. And the tree at the top was never pruned and by the 15 years later, it's kind of all over the place and looks a bit messy, doesn't it? But the tree on the bottom that was pruned turns into this lovely shaped tree and it looks a lot healthier. It's probably bearing more fruit. I know it's bearing more fruit and it's just a healthier tree. So the pruning while you're bearing fruit is certainly not a punishment, but a kind of like a redirection. Um, let's shape this into the form that it should be shaped in. Also some other pruning fun facts. Um, when rose bushes are pruned, they produce more abundant flowers. So if I have a rose bush and it has one flower on one of the branches and I prune it, now there's three. So that's part of the pruning process is yes, it produced fruit. Now it's going to produce even more fruit from the pruning. Grapevines are cut back for two years in order for the root system to be established so that they can bear the weight of a crop of grapes. So if I'm not pruning in the beginning, I'm not going to be able to handle the weight of the grapes and then it's going to ruin the crop. I've also heard stories of grapevines that when they get too long, it can't produce fruit because it's spending all of its energy and resources on growing along that long branch system instead of sending that energy and resources to fruit. So pruning is good for that also so that it doesn't become such a large plant that it just can't sustain itself. Pruning shapes a bonsai tree into a work of art. I think that's just a lovely thing. So pruning helps us grow more fruit, helps us target our resources towards the fruit instead of towards too long of a vine. And it also makes it more beautiful. So let's look at some physics here. And what happens when we only rest a little bit? We can only work a little bit. So that was a short rest, and so I'm not going to have a lot of energy for doing a lot of work, just a little bit. Let's rest a little bit more. All right, now I can swing farther to the right, which is the work area, because I rested for a longer amount of time. Now let's look for even more rest. And now I'm able to do a whole lot more work. And I can even sustain that for a while afterward. It wasn't just one big swing, but I've still got some energy going. So the more I rest, the more work I can do. Rest is a mighty weapon. So not only is it healthy and a better way for you to step into the work that you have to do, but it also just is a good weapon against all types of issues. So I just encourage you to create a rhythm of rest. I recommend small rest daily, whatever that looks like. Maybe it's just 10 minutes of a hobby or half an hour at, with your friend at lunch, whatever that looks like. A little bigger rest on every week, which is really the Sabbath, right? Take one day. Is it always on Sunday? It might be on Friday for you, whatever your schedule looks like. As long as you're setting a day aside where this is the day that I rest. And again, it doesn't mean you're a couch slug. You can be doing things, but you're doing things just for the sake of enjoying them. A medium rest monthly, that may be a couple days, that may be a long weekend, and then a larger rest biannually. So hello vacation. If you have vacation uh, benefits at work, please take them. That's what they're there for and there's a reason for them and it will help you do better work instead of not taking it because you feel guilty about taking it or not taking it because you think that the company is going to fall apart or the office isn't going to be able to run without you. Work those things out and take that rest. It's so important. So for next steps, first I want to look at Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. 
Against such things there is no law. So I share this because this is what comes from rest. When you rest, you're pruned and then you can grow more and you will produce more fruit. And these are the fruit we're talking about. So for next steps, I just encourage you to create your new rhythm where you have those rest, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, the biannually, where you have those rests built into your system. Be intentional about balance. If you're not intentional about it, it's probably not going to happen because the world is going to put more and more demands on you. And so unless you protect that space of rest, someone's going to eat it up. I was in a period of rest for six months and I said no to a lot of things that people were wanting me to do, which was a growth period for me, but also it was a very, very fruitful period of rest. So I had to really be intentional about it. Stay connected to God in both the peaceful and chaotic times. And what I found is the more I have those restful, peaceful times where I am connected to God, the easier it is for me to stay connected to him when life gets crazy and chaotic and busy. So then it'll be easier for you to hear from him, stay abide in him, even during the chaotic times. Rest in proportion to the work you're about to embark upon. Remember the pendulum, the bigger the rest, the more I was able to work. Focus on producing quality instead of quantity. Maybe it's not how much I get done, but how good it was. And that'll shift your, your motivation right from the beginning. What's my goal here? Do I want to just produce a ton of stuff? Or do I want to really focus in on doing a, a just fantastic job and maybe do a little bit less? Value the periods of pruning. Huh, pruning is painful sometimes. You know, I just got something that I had been working on, maybe had I already produced some fruit on it and it got cut back. And when I can remember the lesson from nature on pruning, it helps me appreciate the pruning and know that there's gonna be more fruit that comes from that. Valuing the periods of rest, they're not a waste of time. They are so important and they are necessary. They're absolutely necessary to produce this type of fruit. And then you get to enjoy the fruit because these are beautiful things. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Enjoy the fruit because it is so worth it. Being pruned so that you can grow more fruit and resting is so worth the fruit. I just encourage you to let him prune you so that you produce the sweetest fruit ever. And I just bless you in this.